independent thought, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Is anybody out there willing to listen? Get vaccinated. The vaccines are terrific. You know, absolutely, they do a great job on this Delta variant. It's time for to start blaming the unvaccinated folks, not the regular folks. It's the unvaccinated folks that are letting us down. These vaccines are saving lives. They are reducing mortality. I would encourage people to get the vaccine. I have high confidence in it. I got it myself. Yeah, people aren't going to listen. They're not. They're they're not. And it's I I said it last week and I'm going to say it again. I think we're looking at this in in ways that. To me. Are wrong. It's simple. People think that these people are anti-vaxxers. Are there a few of them that have lost the plot and who think that, yeah, that they're this is, you know, some sort of government, you know, uh, trial and we're using us as human guinea pigs or that there there is a group of people that you're not going to you're not going to reach them. It's never going to happen on their deathbed. If they've got this end up dying, they would still think they did the right thing. Because they didn't want to be marked by, you know, the devil or whatever. You just can't. But a lot of people, it has nothing to do with the vaccine or if they're going to turn into a vegetable or if they're going to be tracked by the government. It's being told. These folks do not respond to being ordered to do those things. I had a very smart guy who was who visited with me this week who said, I don't want the government telling me what I have to do. It's a libertarian type of response to this but what they do respond to i sat with this guy and i walked him through the facts and then he said okay i'm gonna go get vaccinated yeah it's being told what to do that people don't want to be told what to do none of us you me doesn't matter what side of the aisle you're on who you worship any of those things who you love we don't want to be told what to do and i think the way that the government came out and handled so much of this at the beginning and the way that it felt like the overreach was there, eh, people don't want to be told what to do, right? They don't. And right now, now it's gotten to the point where we are seeing a, a two different worlds. We're seeing the vaccinated and the unvaccinated. The severely sick and the majority of people that are catching this thing are unvaccinated. I'm all about choice, but I'm also about, you know, personal responsibility. What's the personal responsibility? Well, your personal responsibility is uh, looking around and saying, hey, is this the right thing to do for my community, for, 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 for my people, for my family, for my friends, for my coworkers? That's where we're at right now. We're going in the wrong direction. If you look at the inflection of the curve of new cases, it is among the unvaccinated. And since we have 50% of the country not fully vaccinated, that's a problem, particularly when you have a variant like Delta, which has this extraordinary characteristic of being able to spread very efficiently. It's really an outbreak among the unvaccinated, which is the reason why we're out there practically pleading with the unvaccinated people to go out and get vaccinated. Yeah. It's it's sad that we're at this point, but this is where we're at again. We're at this bizarre point where we're 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 begging people, hey, could you get vaccinated? And then people come up with all this bizarre. Ah, I can't because of this or I'm going to turn it to a vegetable. And and, or, you know, I mean, that's all this weird stuff when the reality is it's it's, you know, like being told what to do. Just say that. Say, look, I want. I, I feel like I'm being forced to do something that I may not want to do. This thing's not tested. It has been tested. It's been well over a year. It is. Well, you don't know what's going to happen. Let me tell you something. I talked to uh, a few doctors last week. We had, if you haven't listened, we had Dr. Macri on, who was uh, just. He's a great. You know, he, here's a guy who's been spot on with this. He was on last week. John Hopkins, dude, smart dude. Said, look, this thing's it's no joke. You don't take it lightly. Get the vaccine, you're gonna be fine. Have the media spun it in ways where it has been ridiculous? Absolutely. In saying that, it's the net. The net is so much bigger. And now we're living in two different worlds. We're living in a vaccinated world and an unvaccinated world. People say, well, it's not really been tested. We don't know what the coronavirus is gonna do to your body 
for years. Who knows what it'll do? Maybe it weakens your lungs that in, in 15, 20 years, your, your lungs will start to give out. So we don't know any of those things. This is all new. What we do know is the vaccine seems to work pretty damn good. Nothing is 100%. But I tell you what, people are starting to ask serious questions, even Republicans, about, hey, we're going to have to separate everybody from the vaccine people and the unvaccinated. There's two mandates that are possible. One would be a vaccine mandate. We're not going to do that because that would even cause a greater reaction of negativity toward the government and then in imposition on freedom. Secondly, would be a mandate for wearing masks. It is a conservative principle to allow for local control. That is a fair discussion about it. And that's something we're going to have to continue to weigh depending upon uh, vaccination rates and how they proceed between now and school. And school's going to be a big thing. Let's pretend for a second that we live in a normal time. Kids go back to school. My little one starts today. Hey, going back to school and got the new outfit, all that stuff. Oh, did you get the right mask? Yeah. The opposite side of stuff. We're, we're, We're not in this position where we're not going to see fights now. The mask mandate in some areas is going to come back. Now, we're not going back to where we were a year ago. It's just not happening. This thing is, we we have gotten so many people that are vaccinated now that even though the spread could, could, in theory, grow tremendously, the numbers, I don't think we'll see the hospitalizations because the people that were most vulnerable have already been vaccinated. But we will see increasing numbers. And there will be certain areas of the country that will somewhat pull back. But we're not going back to where we were a year ago. But th- but make no bones about it. This coming battle, and I, and I say watch it with the kids, because here comes the battle with the kids. Parents, kids, should they, shouldn't they? Could you do this? Can you do that? Why, why does my kid not have to wear a mask? And this kid does. This is going to feel like we're, we're back in a battle over things that we shouldn't be battling about because – Right now, and I and I go back and say it, I am fine with people not wanting to wear, I mean, to, to, to take a shot. I'm not here to force him, but I would never do that. My question is always simply this. Is it based on science or is it based on government telling you what to do or insanity? And you know what insanity is, so don't give me this. Thing. You should, you should be like, you shouldn't force. No, I said, if you think you're really going to turn into a plant, or the government's tracking you, or whatever. Yeah, I find that insane. I do. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show, your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. All that being said, we do have an economy that we think is moving forward, but is like everything else. It's based on a lot of what's going to be happening over the coming weeks. The National Association for Business Economics says the economic recovery shows no signs of slowing down. Demand is really strong. Hiring is strong. And so those are all positive indicators that show that overall the recovery is pretty solidly in place. NABE's Chad Moutre says that growth also extends to sales. Two-thirds uh, of respondents say that they had the highest sales expectations in, in 27 years. Moutre says costs are also up, and in some cases those increases are being passed on to consumers. Of course are going to be passed on to consumers but all in all feels like things are good overall economists are pretty upbeat about the coming months yeah now what's it look like though is this something regular something new is this what we're looking at for the next several months several years i think we're all in the new norm. i think we're all normal work you know work we might be starting to return to work but i think a lot of folks expect that There might be much more of a hybrid model where maybe some of that work can be done from home. Yeah. It's not even just some of the work. Employees are now pushing back saying, you know what? I don't even want to come back to work. I don't want to get back to the office. I liked what I have. I always assumed, I think a lot of people did, uh, who, who could see where the world was going. Once we got connected the way we did. My assumption is, has always been that we as 
a species in the you know in the technologically driven mostly western countries we're looking for other ways to do work gig the gig economy was already starting to explode and part of the reason for the gig economy exploding is because people are looking at life in a much different way they stay up a little later they'd rather do work a little bit later they're they're going to bed you know uh, and you know my, my uncle and i i'll call him we're business partners he works extremely late or extremely early depending on how you look at it he and i will have phone conversation at two in the morning for an hour because he's still up doing work and I'm starting my day. He's going to bed, but he'll be up a little bit later. We just, the gig economy is pushing us in the, hey, it's a 24 hour period. Get your work done in a 24 hour period. Now, because of this, the reality is, is more and more employees are kind of done with what they thought was the normal. They don't want that. They've liked the last year and a half of working from home and they want to keep it that way. So it's very interesting. In, in the way that employees are approaching this and that some are just out and out quitting altogether, even good jobs, because they know the market is hot. And if they're good employees, they know they'll be hired. And what they're looking for at times isn't more money. And this is where employers need to jump at this. It's not more money. It's more freedom. Because around the the money side of things, they're able to do other things that will save them money. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. A little more about that. The Olympics underway. How are we doing? It's <laughs> a good question. Oh, my Lord. How are we? How is anybody? I watched some, and I'll just, I'm going to post it. I joked the last three weeks about canoeing, and sure enough, I was flipping around yesterday, and I got the Golf Channel wrong with NBC Sports, and there was canoeing on. We'll talk about that. Raycon, best earbuds around. So uh, I'm getting my studio built out. For those of you guys who don't know, I live an hour plus away. I've got this little itty-bitty strip mall by us that actually had somebody, for whatever reason, built a sound booth in this thing, and we're able to, to, to rent it out. So I'm going to do some of my shows from there and some of them here in Phoenix during the day. And... The great thing is all the stuff I'm doing from there is going to be Bluetooth enabled, which means my Raycons can work right now. I got the old style. I'm going to plug everything in. These computers aren't built for that. I love the fact that the sound quality is better. Plus, it's better for my ears, better design, better comfortable fit. I love these. Bluetooth enabled, absolutely seamless as you could think of, 100%, six hours of talk time and a 45-day happiness guarantee. If you want no stems, no wires, and a better sound quality, Raycon, Raycon, Raycon. Save big. Buy right now. Save an extra 15%. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. They start under $70. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Chad Benson Show. Welcome to Chad. 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 No, not the country. The institution. The Chad Benson Show. Oh, oh yes. Ugly. Uh, 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 ugly. One of the things that's ugly is the fact that the Japanese have lied and the IOC knew about it and it's starting to be talked about and we're just early days into this thing, right? So it started last week with the sports kicking off the team sports because it takes longer for the team sports. you got to go through groups and then into quarterfinals and semis. So some of these things takes much longer. But it started in earnest on Saturday. They started giving away medals. And uh, one of the things people are complaining about, though, that has nothing to do with COVID or the lack of fans. It is all to do with the fact that Japanese lied about the weather. They lied about the weather. And the IOC knew about it. Moving start times much earlier to beat the heat over the weekend. Humidity in the 70% range. Temps reading reaching in the mid-80s to mid-90s. When you're playing sports like tennis 
or I don't know, running a triathlon, you're finding out that this is a nightmare. People are collapsing. This is not looking good for any of this. Speaking of said Olympics, though, how are we doing? On day two, women's gymnastics losing some of their invincible aura, finishing second in the qualifying round. Simone Biles and Sunny Salee finishing in first and second place. They now advance to compete in the all-round finals. Despite some stumbles, Biles has advanced to all finals and the chance to win six golds. USA Swimming raking in the medals. Simone Manuel and the US 4x100 freestyle relay team taking bronze. But it was Chase Kalish taking home Team USA's first gold in the 400 individual medley. If I could hope anything comes from that is that it motivates the rest of my teammates. Yeah, we'll see. We actually won a fencing. I joke about it. We actually won the fencing. Like it's the first time ever we won a gold in fencing. Male or female. <laughs> oh. I was flipping around yesterday. I thought, oh, I'm going to watch the uh, uh, 3M which is the uh, was the golf tournament this weekend. I was sitting home relaxing and because uh, it was raining here all weekend. I know it was weird. In fact, we only got up to like 75 degrees for the last couple of days. It's, this is a different kind of weather. They knew what their weather was going to be. We didn't know what ours was going to be. But I'm flipping around. I thought, oh, it's on, it's on NBC Sports. And I flipped it on. And what was on? Canoeing. So they go down the little thing. Right. And then they got to go through the they have like these cones, but the cones are dangling down and you got to kind of go around them. And I thought. But you think about this. Like this is it for you. Right. Like this is your jam. Like nobody's tuning in. Nobody's watching canoeing four weeks from now. Nobody's watching canoeing six months from now. This is your one chance to make it big. Hopefully, you know, something you had a passion for. Once you're done with it, hopefully you make a little bit of money and, and go out with a smile on your face. And there's nobody in the crowds anywhere. And that is also eerie. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show. It's your Twitter. It's the Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. A lot of parents are concerned about the coming school year. What's the White House doing to make sure that we're not doing remote learning again nationwide? Our plan and our objective and our desire and commitment is to uh, to push for and ensure 100% of schools are open across the country. That's also, of course, up to school districts to implement, but from the federal government, provide funding for mitigation me- measures for schools so that they can invest in uh, social distancing opportunities or repairing vents that need to improve ventilation. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the schools are kicking off. Some schools started here last week and around the country. It's different times. Some are getting it early to make up for so much lost time. Uh, Staff Dyer is going to school today. Jack is because he they stayed very late. So my son, they they went through. Normally they're out in late May. They were through June, parts of June. So uh, they're going to start a little bit later. Uh, not that they normally would, but just when you're hearing some of the school districts. But this is uh, this is it. I mean, you know, like this is where I said that the next battle is going to come. And God willing, it shouldn't. But we're having a bump. And because we're having a bump and a spike in people that are getting this a Delta variant, it is causing, as we know, governments, in particular, local governments and local politicians, to run with this and to start to think about reimposing certain things. And the fight that ended last year was kids went back to school was how long does my kid have to wear a mask? Why does my kid have to wear a mask? And you've heard so many bizarre, like if you're over two, you should wear a mask. Like a two year old's not wearing a mask. It's just not happening. It isn't. It's not going to happen. It's just, 
They, they can't keep their clothes on. Right? They're, they're not wearing a mask. It's just not going to happen. Four-year-old, probably not going to happen. You get it. My son's 11. He doesn't wear his mask well. He'll wear one, kind of. But that was a lot of it was preschool, you know, like pre going back to school. When they went back to school, even watching them as they finished out their year with their big extravaganza, the kids in class, they're none of them wearing the mask properly. They were all way too big. They're all down around their chin. If you're a teacher and you've been vaccinated, that's all you should care about. If you have worries about your child getting something, and bring it home because you have people who have comorbidities and you're not faxed, then you should rethink it. And if you don't think it's a bother at all, then send your kid to school. But the fight is going to get ugly when it comes to the mass side of things. I can already feel it. That one of the reasons why, you remember the criticism I got initially saying teachers should get vaccination, get in line first. The vast majority of teachers are vaccinated, number one. Number two, the CDC is going to say that what we should do is everyone over the age of, under the age of 12 should probably be wearing a mask in school. That's probably what's going to happen. Yeah, and that's not the group that's uh, really solid with that. Over 12, you're probably fine. But remember, over 12 can get vaccinated. Secondly, those over the age of 12 who are able to get vaccinated, if you're vaccinated, you shouldn't wear a mask. If you aren't vaccinated, you should be wearing a mask. So it's going to get a little bit tight in terms of, well, a mom or dad being honest that, you know, Johnny did or did not get vaccinated. That's going to raise questions. Yeah. So here we go. Be prepared for the battle that is the mask. Debate three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter tweet at us text the program crime it's ugly it's nasty we know it's rising Greg Gutfeld and them took a uh, very interesting stand on some stuff when it came to crime and part of the reason is is because crime is out of control in a lot of places right now you're releasing people that were in prison. For something that was nonviolent, but they've got a violent past, and now you're releasing them back out into there because this is the right thing to do. No, not everybody deserves that re-release. I think everybody deserves a second shot to a certain extent. I think we can all, and we should all agree, that people deserve another opportunity, a second chance at something. But the left is kind of blind to what's going on in big cities because, you know, it's, it's become a left-right thing. Look, we should – seeing what's going on in places like, you know, uh, San Francisco and Portland and, and any of these places where you just see the rampant crime running wild. You look what's going on in Los Angeles, Philadelphia, Chicago, in certain areas, New York – Los Angeles, all of these, you watch what's happening, and the downplaying of it is hilarious. As if nothing else is going on. Oh, it's no big deal. It's not a big deal. It's none of this. It's it's because of COVID. It's because it's, it's crazy. What they may require is to be off of our streets because they're making it unsafe for us. And it only took bullets flying in their own backyard for the liberal media to care. This, of course, after CNN hosts previously mocked the surge in violence. You listen to conservative media, you would think that, you know, uh, it, entire cities are just, you know, in, in brawled in fights and fires and whatever. We went out and had a great dinner in New York City tonight. People actually walked up to us and said, thank you for, I watch you every night. I can't believe they thought they did to do a double take at us actually hanging out and not seeing us on the TV screen. <laughs> Don Lemon, oh, it's just awful. But crime is up. It's funny, you write, uh, you just type in, crime rates rise. This is what you get. BBC, U.S. crime. Is America seeing a surge in violence? Yes. How bad is the crime rates rising in u.s homicides u.s crime rates not letting up in major cities bloody summer says algeria al jazeera we don't know why violent crime is up (laughs) washington post is it because we're releasing bad people on the street that can't be it oh i don't think so it's got to be something else right is it is it that it 
I'm here in Arizona. 44% jump in homicides last year, right? Now it's jumped big time this year. Is it because of the coronavirus? Is that it? It's like these guys were great guys before, but then the coronavirus came and we let them out, and lo and behold, they're back at it again. There are some people who have nonviolent offenses and they're in jail, and it's ridiculous. There are some people who are in jail because of a nonviolent offense, but only because they were on parole for many violent offenses, and we're like, we should let them out. And everybody just goes, oh, the media, the Republicans, it's overblown. It's completely overblown. Oh, my God. But notice the change in tone when Jim Acosta's fancy dinner got erupted last night. Jim, you just, I guess, happened to, to be there. And what did you see? What did you hear? Yeah, Anderson, I was having dinner uh, at a restaurant that's very popular in D.C., La Diplomat. People have probably heard of it. Uh, it's on 14th Street in Northwest Washington. All right, Graham, I'm just trying to picture myself in Jim Acosta's shoes where people had just died. Mm -hmm. People were running scared for their lives. Gunshots everywhere. And I was mentioning that I was at a, a very popular restaurant. I name dropped the restaurant, wasn't even English. And maybe, maybe you've heard of it. I would just say I was having dinner around the corner. Yeah. No, because you got to do that too. It's like, but it shows you what it's, 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 if it gets in your neighborhood, if it lands in your yard, things change. That's so much of, of how things change. When it starts, remember, was it uh, Lori Lightfoot? Like, hey, going out and, you know, the Black Lives Matter movement and everything, and you guys go out and protest, do all you guys want to do, go for it, knock it out. The minute they got near her house, they started going down to her street. They started to go in her neighborhood. They started getting to her house. The minute that happened, she's like, we got to change this. That's the way it goes. I remember last year in San Francisco, Mayor London Breed's like, all right, we're going to build uh, homeless shelters right here this beautiful park the rich people are like no you're not mm -hmm. not today you're not oh we care we just care that they're over there then we care even more we're gonna really care if you put it in front of us you know i don't like to swear in the five o'clock hour but i don't know if you could find a larger ass than jim acosta cnn has been engaging in a cover-up of violent crime for a quite a while. They did it for political reasons. They did it because they wanted Biden in. Crime doesn't exist until it gets in their face. Do you remember when the protests were happening and people like Maxine Waters and everybody was happening? You, you got to get in their face. Well, maybe they were right. The crime has to get in their face, right? The crime, ha that's the only way they understand it. Yeah. It's like a lot of people. They're, they don't get it. They don't understand it unless it's in front of them. Then it becomes something. I mean, last year, there's riots going on in the streets. There's all these things happening in the streets. And they're like, well, not, it's mostly peaceful. It's like the place behind you is burning. It's like you're not, you're not telling all of the story. You're telling a portion of the story that fe makes you feel good. Crime, guess what? There are some bad people out there. And they'll do stupid things. And you can't, you can't blame it all on coronavirus. Well, people are just upset, and they're indoors, and they're not. No. Criminals don't stop being criminals because something's going on. It's like, did you guys hear this pandemic? We should all stay indoors. Put our mask up. No, they're like, is this an opportunity for us to do more bad things? Maybe. But Jim Acosta, it disrupts his dinner, and he gets to tell you where he was. <laughs> and, uh, and, 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 and Chris Elisa gets to talk about the great seats he had at the baseball game. <laughs> it only until they can talk, put themselves in the story, it won't matter. So maybe the thugs should be doing more work in their neighborhoods. But the thugs don't. And part of the reason is is because then 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 it gets bigger. The criminals don't. Criminals don't do any of those things because there's a line you don't want to cross. Because when you end up crossing that line. That's when people are like, well, it's far, it's a bridge too far now. We need to do something. It's a bridge too far now. We need to do something that stop this. It's a bridge too far. We need to get out there and make sure this doesn't happen again. When it's a certain area, right? You look at Chicago. Most of the violence takes place in a small area in Chicago. Those people that are law-abiding citizens, the uh, citizens, the ninety. 
99% of them are held capture by politics and BS. They're captured right there, stuck in areas where they don't feel like they can get out, and it's nasty. But if that stuff moved and went to Lori Lightfoot's house, you better bet your candy ass they're going to figure out a way to stop that. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. I promise you that. Works for my dog, Doodle, who is the coolest, oldest dog in the world. His hips don't hurt because of Rough Greens, a supplement. Canine Vita Smart, put it right on top of my dog's food, brings his food to life, and he absolutely loves it. It's incredible to see the change in the last 18 months. We've gotten two puppies since then. We've started them off right. They love it. And it's got vitamins, minerals, probiotics, digestive enzymes, all this amazing stuff. And it just really does. It's just a little bit of this supplement goes a long way. Right now, Rough Greens wants you to try it before you buy it. R-U-F-F-Greens.com slash Chad. Roughgreens.com slash Chad. You go there. You cover the shipping. They're going to send you a bag absolutely free. Try it. Put it to the test. I think you're going to see huge difference with my dog. His coat's better, but most importantly, his hips. The arthritic hips, his joints are so much better. He's a happier dog. Roughgreens.com slash chat. Call 833-MY-DOG-77. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. I am not a terrorist. I am not Antifa. I am not a sex slave that wears masks. (gasps) Don't be a cutie pie. I sit around and cook some soups and eat bread and desserts and just get all fat and sassy. You're ruining my life, bud! You haven't seen anything yet! You're listening to The Chad Benson Show. You have wrinkles. M. Night Shyamalan's horror thriller Old debuted in first place at the box office with $16.5 million. But perhaps the bigger story is what happened to last week's number one. I'm a cartoon? The LeBron James animated comedy Space Jam, a new legacy, was expected to repeat in first. Instead, it fouled out, falling to fourth in week two with $9.5 million, a nearly 70% drop in business from last week's $31 million debut. The guy who directed the first one said it took me four times to get through the movie start stop that's how bad he thinks the movie is so people it's just i've seen a portion of it and it looks like a just a big ad for something and the other side is that he's not in it's not in china and they have no right now they have no plans to release it in china and that is a big thing. Remember what happened last year, or the year and a half, four, uh, two years ago with Daryl Morley, who was then the the guy who ran the Houston Rockets, uh, and and you know about standing with Hong Kong, and then China stood up and said we're not going to do this, and all the NBA players are like, please don't, and you know LeBron leading the way, and there was the shut up and dribble and the the controversy there. Well, all that kowtowing and kissing ass apparently has not worked. And this may not be shown in China. So, uh, freedom! 323 538 At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. The Olympics, and we're just talking about this off the air, is in real time. We're watching something that is massive happen in real time. And it's not like football, right? Like, we're you know, Sunday, uh, we're not going to allow fans in. But Monday night, this group may allow fans and this team some. Or it, 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 and, you know, there's a Tuesday and a Wednesday. It's, we're not, this isn't like that. This is real time and a one off. Apparently, now they're discussing allowing fans to come to some of the venues, in particular, the venues that are open air. So. Soccer games, the, the the track and field, things of that nature, they would allow them to potentially get out there and see. Uh, this is a nation that has the vaccine. I think it's only about 
twenty percent. We were I was talking to Jim Ryan last week, who's there for ABC News, and he said about twenty percent of the of of the nation's vaccinated. They have the vaccine, but I don't think people realize that that the nation itself is a very rural nation. Outside of a, a few big cities, a lot of it is very rural. And is is that the issue? Well, chances are the people in the rural areas probably aren't like, hey, we got to get over to see skateboarding. <laughs> so, like, that, the, the Olympics isn't going to make them take a vaccine. Well, that would be funny. <laughs> right? Got to get there and take, do it. Go see skateboarding. If you haven't seen the guy that, for a lack of a better term, Oh, boy, is what he sounds like now. He was a skateboarder uh, who uh, tried to do a rail slide. And in doing the rail slide, let's just say this, uh, didn't pull it off the way he wanted to, Peruvian skateboarder. Uh, Let's just say it was nutty delicious. (laughs) If you're not him. Chad Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts independent life this is chad benson these folks do not respond to being ordered to do those things i had a very smart guy who was who visited with me this week who said i don't want the government telling me what i have to do it's a libertarian type of response to this but what they do respond to i sat with this guy and i walked him through the facts and then he said okay i'm gonna go get vaccinated chris christie there and We've talked about it for a while on the show. We try to be a little bit ahead of the curve, and sometimes we are, partly because we come at things not in chaos, craziness, and lunacy, but mostly in common sense and actually try to get to the bottom of stuff. It's not anti-vaxxers. Antitrust of government. And by the way, it's not just the right side of the aisle, although a majority of people, it, it is, but it's not. You have people of color, in particular the, the Latino community and the black community, who are hesitant to get the vaccine. Also, little distrust in the government. But so much of this is, I don't be told what to do. I feel like you're telling me what to do. I feel like you're forcing me to do something that I'm unsure of. And even people out there that are sure, like, hey, I know this thing's work. I don't, I'm, I'm not worried about, you know, if this is the number of the beast or uh, any of this craziness. That, that we hear out there, so many of these things are get to the point where, well, you know, I feel like it's the principle of the thing now. Now I feel like you're shoving it down my throat. Now I feel like you're pushing it on me at in, in such a way that I have no choice but to stand up and say no. No, not going to do it. No. But the numbers are bearing out that it's getting uglier out there. Now, look at the hospitalization numbers. Don't look at the the numbers of how many people test positive. Don't look at those numbers. If you've been vaccinated, you don't need to go get a test, right? You've been vaccinated. Chances of you passing it on is very very small. You don't need to go get a test. Dr. Macri, we had on last week, he said, hey, if you've been vaccinated, just, just no need to get a test. But so many people are going out there. Luckily, and I say this, is the majority of the people that are catching this thing are young, healthy. Chance of them dying from this is is very small. Very, very small. So even though the numbers may spike, look at the hospitalizations. Even though the numbers may rise, look at the, the hospitalizations for this. Yes, we're going to see a rise in some of that because some people will get sick and die from this. That's 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 the reality of it. But look at that comparatively to just the numbers alone. 
But government is government. I think we all know that. And what's going to happen? Well, government's going to overstep. Government's going to get back in everybody's face when it comes to certain things. Right now, they're imploring people, get vaccinated. We're going in the wrong direction. If you look at the inflection of the curve of new cases, it is among the unvaccinated. And since we have 50% of the country not fully vaccinated, that's a problem, particularly when you have a variant like Delta, which has this extraordinary characteristic of being able to spread very efficiently. It's really an outbreak among the unvaccinated, which is the reason why we're out there practically pleading with the unvaccinated people to go out and get vaccinated. Yeah, and here's what they're not doing right now. They're not, unless you get into the hospital and you die and you're vaccinated, they're not reporting people who have been vaccinated with breakthrough cases. Just not happening. Part of the reason is, is they just, they want people to get vaccinated. (laughs) But Chad, you could get this if you've been vaccinated? Yes, you can. John Rom just won the U.S. Open. So about six, eight weeks ago, He was leading in a tournament and just wasn't leading, was running away. The tournament was over. It's Saturday. He's got like a six or eight stroke lead. He comes off on the 18 and you you don't know what's going on. You see them talking and you're like, what is going on there? Right? Because the minute he gets off, you got you got guys in masks and tournament directors and all this stuff. Then he goes off and You see him almost collapse, and you're like, whoa, that's just a trip, right? Like, that's weird. You find out he has COVID. He tested positive. So he's out of the tournament. Then he goes, and he wins the U.S. Open. Everybody talks about this great. He wins the U.S. Open. Uh, He then goes and gets ready to play in the Olympics representing Spain. He's tested positive again. So he's had it. He's been vaccinated and he still tests positive. Now he doesn't feel anything. Didn't feel anything last time. This is going to be some of the questions about like, well, should that person be allowed to play at this point in time? I mean, isn't this, it's it's like no different than having a, uh, you know, a flu or a cold. You show up, you're still going to do your gig. This is this is where we have to start deciding. Are we going to treat this thing like the flu? Live around this thing, through this thing, above this thing? Or are we going to allow it to run everything? And unfortunately, because government has been so deeply involved in this, so entrenched in this in such a way, I don't think there's any doubt in my mind that government is going to take a deeper grab into certain places and situations in the coming weeks, especially as we see this thing continue to spike. The Republicans are trying to push people get vaccinated. Is anybody out there willing to listen? Get vaccinated. The vaccines are terrific. You know, absolutely, they do a great job on this Delta variant. It's time to start blaming the unvaccinated folks, not the regular folks. It's the unvaccinated folks that are letting us down. These vaccines are saving lives. They are reducing mortality. I would encourage people to get the vaccine. I have high confidence in it. I got it myself. Yeah. DeSantis, Asa Hutchinson, Kay Ivey, by the way, governor of Alabama. This is what she said last week. She is frustrated. The new cases in COVID are because of unvaccinated folks. Almost 100% of the new hospitalizations are with unvaccinated folks. And the deaths are certainly occurring with unvaccinated folks. These folks are choosing a horrible lifestyle of self-inflicted pain. You know, we've got to get folks to take the shot. The vaccine is the greatest weapon we have to fight COVID. There's no question about that. The data proves it. When people hear that, they're going to push back. And we've seen it over and over again. And we're going to continue to see it. I don't think that's going to change anytime soon. People are going to push back. While you're, you're, you're going to have to allow them to come to it on their own path. And some will not come to it until it's too late. And others will come to it over a period of time. But it isn't going to happen overnight. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Shows, your Twitter. 
Tweet at us. Text the program. Yes, I remember there was January 6th. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tapping Congressman Adam Kinzinger to join the panel. And similar to Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who will also be sitting on that committee. He is an outspoken critic of former President Donald Trump. He voted to impeach him after the January 6th insurrection. Republican leader Kevin McCarthy saying that Pelosi is playing politics after she rejected two of his picks. Yeah, and that's what this is. It's politics, and we're still... Sitting here, we're still fighting over this, so we're going to go to a 9 11 style. Okay, I think we know. Look, I, this is just me. I'm going to go. I've read a lot of this stuff, I've seen a lot of this stuff. I've had to do you know, I've done tons of interviews, and I don't bring it up here much because I, I don't think it's hard if you're again a person who's common sense thinking, can look around, kind of read a room. There were a few groups of people loosely associated that did some stupid things because for whatever reason right they thought they were they were going to overturn the election they thought that mike pence and these were awful people who had ideas that were placed in there through q and on and a bunch of other stuff a lot of other people were following them got themselves into to to more than a bit of a spot of balta and that's most of what this is and yes, she's playing politics. Welcome to the world of Nancy Pelosi. So let me get this right. The only people you want who are Republicans on your committee that should be bipartisan are the two that Donald Trump can't stand because they can't stand him. That's politics right there. In a nutshell, that's what politics becomes. Sad. You guys aren't interested in finding out, hey, were there some groups here that really had designs on doing something? What should we be looking for? How, you're not interested in that. You're interested in what helps my base, what helps me raise money, what makes me look good amongst the base of the Democratic Party. 323-538-2423 at Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Raycon, best ear buds around. Got my little new studio set up, and it's great because that's all going to be wireless. So my Raycons work nicely with that because they're seamless Bluetooth pairing. Better sound quality, better design, more control, 45-day happiness guarantee. From rose gold to dark blue to white to black to bright red, they've got so many different colors. Take advantage of it right now. Save an extra 15% when you go to buyraycon.com slash chad. You will love these things. There's no stems. There's no wires. What I love about these is I can turn them down to a very low volume with the control that I have, and I can take them up high. I like the fact that I can do both because when I'm listening to audio and I'm doing things, to me it matters. But for the average person just walking around, just going for a workout, these things work incredible, and you're not going to break the bank. They start under $70. Get your Raycons now. Save an extra 15%. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. 45-day happiness guarantee. You don't like them, send them back. Buyraycon.com slash Chad. Buyraycon.com. Slash Chad, Chad Benson Show. I can't take it anymore. Well, get over it. It's time to forge a new path. With your very own political cartographer, Chad. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Lift off. Now it's time to find out what's trending. What's trending? Yeah, what does that mean? I mean something, right? Like it's trending on the old internet. What's trending? Let us take a peek. See what's trending. The much thing that trended yesterday, right now trending big time, is Bitcoin it's nearing 40,000. It's been kind of all over the place. Yesterday, the biggest trending thing was ROC Olympics. What does ROC mean? It means the Russian Olympic Committee. 
because the Russians are in the midst of a ban from participating and having their flag and everything. So it's the Russia Olympic Committee. Because they cheated. I don't know if you're aware of that. <laughs> they have cheated. In the past, they have cheated and cheated. And continue at times to be caught doing things they're not supposed to be doing. U.S. gymnastics team is trending as well. They did not come in first in the qualifications, but that's the qualifications. The whole goal is to win it all. You don't win anything on the first go around. You don't? Mm, no. No, you don't. Head on over to Twitter. Twitter, uh, trending stuff in the world of Twitter. The exciting stuff. Yes, the Olympics are trending big time. Also, COVID trending again. LeVar Burton, who really, really, really wants that Jeopardy job. Today is his day. He starts this week as the celebrity guest trying to find the permanent host for Alex Trebek. So they're trying hard. He's, he has been lobbying for it. He wasn't a part of the original mix, but so many people said it. He said he really, really wants to do it. He's pushed hardcore for it. And now he'll have his week. So we'll see how this goes. He really, really, really wants that gig. Really, really, really wants that gig. I mean, why wouldn't you want it, right? Like, I mean, it, it is, if you think about it, of all, like one of all of the gigs. Now, you don't want to be the guy after the guy, but what they have done is they didn't name an heir apparent to it, knowing he was going to die. Maybe some people, I think, thought they would name it some sort of heir apparent, and they've thrown celebrities, and they're giving it a ton of breathing space. Like in sports, right? You never want to be the guy after the guy. Like the, the guy that's coming in after... Nick Saban, that's, you want to be that guy? Or do you want to be the guy after that guy, potentially? Ooh, yeah, it's a tough one. It's a tough one. So, LeVar Burton really wants it, and they've given a lot of breathing room in between all of this. So, I think uh, I think they're getting close to making some sort of uh, final push, potentially. To see who could be. But man, that gig would be great. Because you don't work. Everybody thinks you're there, but you don't. Those game shows are awesome. They film usually one or two days a week, right? So they go and film one or two days a week. So my buddy worked on, uh, for years, he worked on uh, Price is Right and a few other ones. He goes, Bob Barker filmed like Thursday, Friday. Some days it was only one day a week. And he would just do a bunch of games, and then he was off the rest of the week. <laughs> it's like, that's a good gig. Money was stupid good. You don't have to worry about a lot of things. You're not coming up with all the stuff. <laughs> you're not like, all right, now that you're done with the show, you got to go back and edit it, and you got to go write it. No, you show up. Being the talent's a great thing. And you probably get paid well for that. 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Shows, your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from all of you. Our U.S. basketball team sucks. We lost to France. Uh, let's see what they can uh, let's learn from this because they should feel a sense of embarrassment about this. I don't care who you're playing. If you're Team USA, you're expected to win the gold medal. There should be a sense of embarrassment about the loss, and hopefully that requires them to dig a little bit deeper on both ends of the floor as they go forward. Yeah, yeah. Different officiating. The game's much more physical. And the other thing the guys are talking about is the ball's different. It's just a different ball. and feels weird, feels different. Takes a while for some people to get used to, but at the end of the day, it's basketball. So figure it out. You lost to France. We shouldn't be losing to France. Chad Benson Show. The Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. 
I think it'll help. The issue really at this point is what are Americans willing to tolerate and are Americans going to be willing to mask back up again? Uh, it can be a temporizing measure. We really need is a lot more people vaccinated. That's how we end this thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Dr. Ja. Dr. Ja. So what do they say? According to the latest data and figures, and I'm a data and figures guy, I like data and figures, Daily Mail. The Indian Delta variant, a.k.a. the Delta variant, is projected to peak in mid-October, cause up 240,000 infections and 4,000 deaths per day if vaccination rates stay at the same level. Experts are pleading with people, the public, to get their shots as the cases rise. How fast has it risen? 166% in two weeks. Now, where are we on the, I think the seven-day average is right around 54,000. Yesterday, uh, new cases reported was 14,630, somewhere around in there. So, but July 21st, 61,000. You know, we had, you know, it's starting to rise a little bit. There's a lot of people out there. Here's the thing. It's not just vaccinated. And this is what we, 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 we've continued to remind people. It's also people that have caught this thing already before. Maybe you caught it three months ago. Maybe you caught it six weeks ago. Uh, what, whatever it is, there's still immunity with you. And we don't know how long that immunity lasts. When they say, well, it may last a few months. It may last. Nobody knows. We don't know how long these shots last. We just know numbers wise they're working and they seem to be keeping people alive. Because we're going by data. That's all we can do at this point. But if you're ready for the mask mandate, let's... Most people, this is just me, this is my belief, but I, I have had several conversations with people. Most people got the shot. Yeah, they kind of want to protect themselves. I mean, I, I don't think, you know... But most people thought, well, I don't want to wear this damn mask anymore. The quicker I can get the damn shot, the quicker I can get this mask off my face, the better it's going to be for me. And that's why I think if you're vaccinated, you do have a one-up. Because I think work is going to ask people to start wearing the mask again. We have here if you're unvaccinated. But they're not asking the vaccinated people to do that. And the reason is pretty simple. First of all, it's a bad message. If you ask vaccinated people to, to wear a mask, what are you telling everybody? It doesn't work. You've done everything you're supposed to. You even got vaccinated. You're no different than me. And if your whole goal is to say, look, you know, these people are able to do this because based on the numbers and the things we see, they're far more protected than you are. So that's what we've allowed them to do. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I could see that. Yeah, it's it's kind of where we're headed. And then you've got the thing about going on what's going on in the NFL. And I will tell you this right now. I don't know how this looks. Now, many camps are opening up today. Friday and over the weekend, several uh, NFL camps opened up. And, you know, you've got players who are still debating amongst themselves, should they or shouldn't they get vaccinated? Some are being very coy about it. You're also having inside of locker rooms miniature battles amongst teammates that I don't think is going to end well for a lot of these. You know, you're going to you're going to find rooms, right, where guys used to be close that it isn't going to be close anymore. It isn't. In fact, it's going to be the exact opposite. It's going to be a lot of pushback. It's going to be a lot of, uh, of, of sniping. And it may not be face-to-face. It may be via social media. Last week, Stephon Diggs, who plays for the Buffalo Bills, he tweeted something that was a shot at his teammate, Cole Beasley. Now, Cole Beasley has been kind of an outspoken critic of the vaccine has kind of really you know said a lot of things about it not and he even said you know look the minute somebody buys my wife 
a bunch of stock in Pfizer, then uh, then he'll take the vaccine. And I think Mark Cuban said, I'll buy her a, a share or something like that. But uh, he and what happens? Well, the rules are coming out about the NFL are, are, are pretty interesting. Even Fauci's weighed in on this. I think the NFL is sending a very strong signal that it's very important to get vaccinated. If you want to play football and you want to do it in a way that you feel unrestricted and not worrying about any penalties, you just get vaccinated. They're saying that if unvaccinated people get infected, there are going to be consequences. And I think you're going to be seeing that there will be local mandates, be they from colleges and universities or places of business, that there will be pressures for people to get vaccinated. Yeah. Now, Two coaches were let go last week. One from the Patriots, one from the Minnesota Vikings. Both coaches refused to take the vaccine. Uh, Every Tier 1 employee is being essentially mandated in the NFL. So if you work within an NFL team, it doesn't matter if you are the the person who uh, is the ball boy and the quality control assistant, the, the the locker room, the guy who heads up the locker room, make sure that the, the uniforms and everything you know are taking care of the lock, locker room attendant. If you're inside of the front office, all of those positions, coaches and everything, you have to have the vaccine. Otherwise, you're gone. The players, different. One of the things they wanted to do when it comes to the players, though, was say, if you're vaccinated and you get sick or you, you test positive for it, then nothing happens to your team, right? You'll go into quarantine or whatever. Uh, they'll still be able to play a game. If you're unvaccinated, it's a forfeit. And you don't get paid. And neither do the other guys on the other team. Because essentially there wasn't a game. There was no revenue from the game. And that's where a lot of people are crying, no, 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 no. No, can't do that. And again, training camps open up and have. They open up Thursday, Friday, and most of the rest of them all be open this week. We'll see. We'll see what that looks like. Could you imagine? Because already you're having the big uh, gambling companies come out and say, whoa, 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 whoa. No, 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 no. You're having... You know, the TV people are like, well, wait a second here. You know, well, how we get it? We already, we already lost a ton of money on the stupid Olympics. <laughs> Can't lose anymore. I mean, it's it, a lot of people. And fantasy football, too. I mean, think about that. This is a huge. It's the reason that I, I, in many cases I think that, that football has become the sport in America is because of fantasy football, because of the everyday participation of somebody who likes football and they like their team, but now they build up their own team and they're paying attention to the Cleveland Browns, even though they're an L.A. Ram fan, because they're choosing their defense. That's the kind of stuff that, how could you have it? It's like, that's going to be, some things are going to have to be worked out. So this will be interesting. And I think if you've got the vaccine, you shouldn't be tested anymore. Right? Like, if you have the vaccine, why should you be tested? If the chances of you transmitting it are virtually none, why should you continue to go through the charade of testing for something that isn't going to kill you and that you really can't pass on to somebody else? I know golf is getting ready to stop that, I think, in uh, two weeks. So they're playing. They don't have any this week. The uh, they don't have it, and then because of uh, the uh, Olympics, and then they're they have like two more tournaments, but they're done with that. They're not going to be testing players on a daily basis anymore. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from all of you. There's a battle. I don't know if you know this. There's a battle going on between this little country called uh, China and us. And talks have opened up. and They've not started off with a banging excitement and resounding win for either side. 
China had stern words for the United States at high-level face-to-face talks on Monday, accusing the Biden administration of causing a stalemate in relations. At the meeting in Tianjin with Deputy Secretary of State Wendy Sherman, Chinese Vice Foreign Minister Xie Feng told the U.S. to stop demonizing China as the imagined enemy and change its highly misguided mindset and dangerous policy. Chinese state media reported that Xie gave the American side a list of requests, which included the removal of sanctions. The U.S. State Department released a statement reiterating the importance of maintaining open lines of communication and that it was seeking competition, not conflict. Sherman is the most senior official to visit China since Biden took office. Yeah, uh, she... What message you bring in? First of all, she looked a little stunned shouldn't secondly we've talked about it china's in it to win it period case closed end of story they're about winning uh they went on the offensive from jump you should have recognized that that was going to happen and you should have come out hitting a little bit harder china is going to push something soon what is it going to be is it going to be potentially taiwan I think that would be the easiest. They've already done the crackdown on Hong Kong. And they didn't really get outside of some people saying some stuff. But they also saw here how much we're tied to the money side of stuff. What did they do? So many people, even celebrities who spoke out against China, got slapped down. I mean, my goodness me, from LeBron James, right? He came out and praised them. The NBA was like, oh, God, we're going to lose all this. He didn't even get his damn movie played over there. Doesn't look like it's going to be released over there. You had John Cena come out and talk about how Taiwan gets to be the first one to see F-10 or whatever, F-9, whichever one came out. I don't even know which one we're on anymore at this point. What happened? He had to come out in Mandarin and do an apology. I mean, these are, so they realized they the money side of it. But same thing for them. The money side of it. And we have to strike back in a sense of not looking weak they are going to do something the fact that we haven't lift sanctions i think is a good thing 323-538-2423 at chad benson show us your twitter tweet at us rough greens r-u-f-f greens.com slash chat right you go there and uh you go see me talking to my dog doodle how much i love him it's great dog had him for a while didn't think i was gonna see doodle make it and it sounds weird but the reality is is my dog doodle was struggling he was struggling with so many things especially with his hips and it got to the point where he was uncomfortable didn't even like to be pet or moved and we started giving him rough greens right it's just a supplement it's got vitamins minerals vegetables it's got all these amazing things we started giving it to him and lo and behold over the space of two weeks the the improvement was tremendous his joints didn't hurt. Here we are 18 months in it. He's happier and healthier than he's ever been since we've had him. And it works. Right now, you can try it before you buy it. See the amazing difference. It's got vitamins, minerals, vegetables, probiotics, omega-3, 6, 9, all this incredible stuff. See the incredible difference that it has done for my dog by giving it a try with your dog. You don't even have to pay for it. You cover the cost of shipping. They're going to send you a bag for free. R-U-F-F-Greens.com slash Chad, roughgreens.com slash Chad, or call 833-MY-DOG-77, 833-MY-DOG-77. Rough Greens makes any pet food better. Chad Benson Show. If you're part of the politically exhausted majority, don't fear. Your time to be validated and rejuvenated is here. Wake up. It's the Chad Benson Show. The uh, Cleveland Indians announced they're changing their name, the Guardians, and that's already become an issue in the Ohio Senate race, and uh, the former president just minutes ago uh, uh, attacked it. Any reaction by the president or the White House? We certainly support their change of name. We may be on the other side of the president, former president, on that front, I would guess. I haven't seen his tweet or however he's communicating these days. 
Guardians of Traffic. That's what it's about. Wait, what? Yeah. That's it. It's the Guardians of Traffic. <laughs> They're renaming uh, the now still Cleveland Indians until next year for the Hope Memorial Bridge Guardians. So on the Hope Bridge, you see there's these Guardians right there. And they're renaming the team after that, and they're the Guardians of Traffic. So, not super exciting, right? I don't know. I'm wearing my right now, I'm wearing my Caucasian shirt. So if you guys have never seen I'll post a picture later. It is a Cleveland Indians logo, logo, but it's got a white guy with blue eyes and blonde hair, and it says the Caucasians. <laughs> Makes me laugh. And really, at the end of the day, I enjoy laughing. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Love hearing from all of you. The good, the bad, the fun, the wacky. Wacky's everywhere, kids. Wacky's everywhere. Case in point, TikTok and liberals. I've seen a lot of black people scoff at the idea that the black community should stand in solidarity and support of the Asian community right now. And to justify this, they say, oh, Asian people don't like us. They don't help us. Why should we help them? And the answer is quite simple, because white people don't want us to. It's the same reason that white people pit black men against black women or light skinned people against dark skinned people, because we're a lot easier to control when we're divided. Uh, what? So that's. Wait, what? <laughs> yeah. Did, I didn't know that. Did you know that? Did you know that the Asian community and the black community are at each other's throats, apparently, because of white people? Man, we can play for everything. This is one of those things like, we didn't do anything. You did, Chad. You did. It's, it's your entire group. The anti-black and anti-Asian sentiments in our respective communities didn't develop organically. They were put there. They're the product of systems of white supremacy specifically designed to keep people of color disenfranchised in this country. And there is no question that we would all be stronger together. I don't know why. Like, when I hear about, like, Asian people being attacked over, like, the coronavirus, I'm like, really? Well, Chad, you don't like the coronavirus? Yeah, I don't like the communist representatives of china and how they treat their people whether they're actual chinese citizens or people who are not from china but i just yeah that's, that's that has nothing to do with the actual I, how could you be mad at somebody for hey you were not involved in this but i blame it on you <laughs> okay that is dumb oh my lord now it's white people's fault because apparently the Asian community and the black community are fighting. I, Okay. It's our fault. Anything else? Plenty of it. Stick around. We'll find out more stuff you guys did wrong. Jeff Benson Show. This is the Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. Look, I support any message. I think at this point, all that government can really do is try to get people vaccinated. Messaging and it's and it's leading by example. Our governor got vaccinated on live television, so I mean, absolutely, right. it's not as if he is anti-vaccine. And here in Oklahoma City, I'm doing my part in my backyard to carry the message that this should be a wake-up call to the unvaccinated. What is happening right now? And please get out and get vaccinated. David Holt, Republican mayor, Oklahoma City. Look, it's if you're not vaccinated, uh, there's a potential for you to uh, have the next couple weeks of your life uh, ruined and a crapper. Now, the majority of people that get this, I, I am not one of these, oh, my God, if you get it, you're going to die. It's like, no, no, no. What you are going to have to do probably is quarantine. and Everybody around you is going to go get tested. 
right? So there's that. That sucks. And I'd be like, dude, Jim's a Richard, man. Why? Ah, I got, got the damn virus. Gave it to me. Oh, man. Now I got to be, and I got to go get back. Take time out my day. He feels like crap. Majority of people are going A majority. A vast majority. And saying that, we don't want to wear the damn mask anymore. Can we just all agree on that? Can we all agree that we don't want to wear the damn mask? I think it'll help. The issue really at this point is what are Americans willing to tolerate? And are Americans going to be willing to mask back up again? Uh, it can be a temporizing measure. What we really need is a lot more people vaccinated. That's how we end this thing. Yeah. And we're only going to end it to a certain extent. There's still going to be breakthroughs. The Delta virus and the next one, right? So we got the, uh, what was it, the, the Lombard variant. I mean, it's, it's, you know, and then the, we've already had the Alpha, then there's the Omega, the Delta, the uh, the Lombard variant. We're going to have the Google variant. We're going to have the, the, those things are still going to happen because it's still only about 13% of the world's fully vaccinated. This thing is endemic, not pandemic. It's not going anywhere learned how to live with this thing through this thing and around this thing but it's about mitigating the potential for mass breakouts and death that's what it is putting our hospitals under massive pressure most of the people that are getting it now in their you know they're what in the teens to maybe early 30s for whatever reason they haven't got it Usually it has to do with the fact that, it, you know, they don't believe it's real or the side effect's going to be too much and they can't miss any work or school, whatever they're going to come up with. Uh, th- that's the most. The older people that haven't gotten it, people of color, evangelicals on the right, they're not getting it for different reasons. Some don't believe it's real. Some believe that they're going to, that the government's doing experiments. Some don't trust the government because they thought it was too quick that this thing came about. I and mean, all of these things are, are, are things that people throw out there. You're not going to get some people to take this by forcing them in their minds, forcing them in such a way that it feels like you're jamming it down their throat. It feels like it's or else scenario. These folks do not respond to being ordered to do those things. I had a very smart guy who was who visited with me this week who said, I don't want the government telling me what I have to do. It's a libertarian type of response to this. But what they do respond to, I sat with this guy and I walked him through the facts. And then he said, OK, I'm going to go get vaccinated. Chris Christie. Possible that some people will do it that way. A lot of people, it's going to be experience. And for other people out there, it is they're not getting vaccinated uh, because they've had it. And they feel like, you know what, I've got some protection. I've already had this thing. I've got natural antibodies. I've already had this thing. So the 50% number is probably closer to 65 or 70% because a lot of people who have had it have went and got vaccinated again. But the unvaccinated lead the way in hospitalizations and deaths right now. And that's, that's real. And those are real numbers, and that's data you have to look at. And we, most of us, took the damn thing so we didn't have to wear the mask, so we could get out of this thing, so we didn't have to go to restaurants worrying about it. We're going to have to wear a mask when I got up and go to the bathroom. Am I going to have to wear a mask to do this? We don't want to do that. It drives us all crazy. And what are businesses? They're going to be forced in the coming weeks, I'm sure, to make decisions and who knows what you know cities are going to do counties are going to do if they're going to reimpose certain things but i think we're past that point of where we were a year ago six months ago we're past that point it's not happening we're not going back in it isn't going to happen we 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 we, we have to learn to live with this thing through this thing and around this thing But there's going to be arguments and fights. And one of those big things is going to be masks in school. For older kids, for people who are vaccinated, imagine a room full of vaccinated older kids and teachers. It probably is less necessary. I think it's going to be a community, community decision. Yeah. Some communities are going to be all over. Hey, you know what? No big deal. If you're vaccinated, you don't have to wear a mask. Teachers 
probably going to make their choice. Some schools are going to, and it also depends on their union, how hard are they going to come down? Say, all right, you're going to do this. We might do a hybrid model. Who knows? That's still going to be a part of it in certain areas. Here in Arizona, our governor basically sent, he, he did a, a an executive order that said, hey, guess what? Uh, you guys out there. If your teachers, if your school districts think that you're going to go and make kids wear masks and all that stuff, that's not going to happen. I think it's foolish. I think school districts should be allowed to do certain things to a certain level, right, to a certain level. One of the things was if you were even exposed to it, they wanted you to take two weeks off. Whoa, 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 whoa. I, I don't even have it. This is where testing is going to be very important. But when you look at the numbers for kids, Everybody's so you're worried about the kids. The kids, the numbers for kids is virtually nil when it comes to deaths. The CDC, we talked to Dr. Macri last week. The CDC comes out and says there's 340 kids or whatever, give or take, that have that have passed away because of this. And he said, yeah, but out of that, probably 340 of the 45 were kids who had more than a few comorbidities. In many cases, we're already in the hospital for other things, transplants, things of that nature. Kids that may not have made it anyways. Of healthy kids contracting this, the chances of them dying are are virtually nil. He said you could probably count it on one hand, the kids that have died from this, which is awful. But when you look at things like the flu and things like riding your bike, But this is going to be a fight again. And I do think that we remember what happened last year. The battle that was, was parents, school boards, and school districts fighting over masks. That one of the reasons why, you remember the criticism I got initially saying teachers should get vaccination, get in line first. The vast majority of teachers are vaccinated, number one. Number two, the CDC is going to say that what we should do is everyone over the age of under the age of 12 should probably be wearing a mask in school. That's probably what's going to happen. Good luck with that. Good luck. Good luck with an eight year old wearing a mask all day. It's going to have boogers on it. It's going to have snot on it. It's going to drop on the ground. <laughs> Good news is Jimmy doesn't have coronavirus. Bad news is he's got sepsis. <laughs> Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter tweet at us. Oh, the Olympics are going on. We're going to touch on that, including the fact that yet another opponent has withdrawn rather than face this country. We'll touch on that. Some more NFL stuff as well. Three two three five three eight twenty four twenty three at Chad Benson shows your Twitter tweet at us. Love hearing from you, My Pillow. My Pillow has towels. So if you're wet, you will need a towel. My pillow has towels. Normally these towels will run you about 110 bucks. Right now, you're going to set a six, and the cost to you, $39.99. Oh, Lordy, $39.99. Each set, two bath towels, two hand towels, washcloth, two-pack, proprietary technology, highly absorbent, soft to touch, no lotion-y feel, made right here in the U.S. of A. That's the cotton is grown here. Available in sizes and colors. The difference It's awesome. 60 money-back guarantee, one-year limited warranty. Deep discounts on everything that my pillow has to offer and these amazing p- pillow sets for just 40 bucks. Thirty nine ninety nine. Call 800-983-4975. 800-983-4975. Or go to MyPillow.com, MyPillow.com. Use the promo code Benson. Deep discounts with that promo code on everything from the Giza Dream Sheets to the MyPillow to the mattress toppers and more. Take advantage of it today. MyPillow.com. Promo code Benson. Chad Benson Show. Serving up talk radio medium rare and dripping with irony. It's Chad Benson. 
House Speaker Nancy Pelosi tapping Congressman Adam Kinzinger to join the panel. And similar to Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who will also be sitting on that committee. He is an outspoken critic of former President Donald Trump. He voted to impeach him after the January 6th insurrection. Republican leader Kevin McCarthy saying that Pelosi is playing politics after she rejected two of his picks. Uh, uh, uh. They can't even decide who's going to investigate this. Here's what we'll find out about. Nothing. These guys texted a whole bunch, thought they had a way in, thought they had something. QAnon conspiracy theories. The other side's going to say, there's none of that crap. You guys are reading into it. Nancy's picking her people based on the fact that they don't like Trump, and Trump doesn't like them. It's going to be fair and balanced, if you will. If it's going to be a a bipartisan thing, then you need to have people on there that also support Trump and thought that this is a bit of insanity to think this. So will we get that? No, because there's no fun in that. Nancy loves coming out and going, I just think it's the greatest thing that these people hate America, and I could raise money off of them. That's kind of, that's my Nancy Pelosi. It's the best I could do. <laughs> that was a pretty good one. Well, you know, I tried. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. The Olympics. You guys remember those things are going on? Let's talk a little bit about it. Yeah, Olympics going on. We've done a little bit better. We did not start off with with a boom. We didn't. We struggled. I think it was the first day in years, the first first day, where medals were awarded. Remember, the Olympic team events started last week. And those team events, there's no, there's no uh, medals given out. But the medals started going out, I think, Friday or Saturday, and we didn't get any the first day. We have since... Picked up. Currently, we sit in second. Japan is third, and number one is China. We have seven golds, three silvers, and four bronzes. Japan has eight golds, two silvers, three bronzes, and China, six golds, five silvers, seven bronzes. Who's got a bronze? I was like going down here. It's like, okay. Ivory Coast has a bronze. Estonia has a bronze. Israel has a bronze. By the way, Israel, Tohar Butbo. Probably said it wrong, but that's the way it is. He is a judo competitor or a judo, jukata competitor. He has had his second opponent drop out. He had a he had a he had a he had a, a buy in the first round, so he didn't have to compete in the first round. Another opponent has dropped out. So now he's going into like the quarterfinals and people are dropping out because he's Israeli. And nobody wants to face him because of Palestine. Like these are these games are coming on really well. (laughs) This is a good no fans, although they are looking at it today. The organizers are getting together. Go, should we have some fans? Should we be in a situation where You're like, okay, we're outside. It's, it's, we can spread people out. You know, we can have 15,000 people here at 60,000 seat. If we have them tested before, could we do it safely? I say yes. I don't know about you, but watching some of this stuff is, it's tough. I feel bad for these guys and gals. They're out there competing, and there is nobody there. Nobody. Simone Biles even talked about the fact she's got no family there. I honestly have never done a competition without my parents there, so I'm a little bit nervous, but I know they'll be there in spirit. But then as for the crowd, that'll be super weird because it'll kind of be like training. We've never done that as well either. So it'll be a different experience, but we're ready for whatever they throw at us. 
Yeah. She, uh, in the team competition, we came in second in the qualifying, which we haven't done in forever. And team event will get underway, and I'm sure we'll ready the ship a little bit. But it is, uh, uh, it's weird. It is like watching some of these things. It's it's super eerie, especially in some of these stadiums, even in the uh, uh, some of the European soccer stadiums where they decided to move the games when there wasn't any games going on. I mean, uh, fans allowed to their reserve facilities that maybe those stadiums only hold four or five thousand people, so it didn't look like they're in this cavernous place. But it's creepy. <laughs> And if you feed off of that, like if that's your, like you really feed off of the fans, if you feed off that energy, whether it's against you or for you, not having that is tough. And I think we're seeing it because I do think it's affecting some of the athletes. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Crime is up. Some people are laughing about it because, you know, How does this affect me? It really doesn't. Well, then what do I care? We're going to touch on that. More from the Olympics as well. Controversy everywhere, including uh, did they lie to everybody? Chad Benson Show. Chad Benson Show. Independent thoughts, independent life. This is Chad Benson. The National Association for Business Economics says the economic recovery shows no signs of slowing down. Demand is really strong. Hiring is strong. And so those are all positive indicators that show that overall the recovery is pretty solidly in place. NABE's Chad Moutre says that growth also extends to sales. Two-thirds uh, of respondents say that they had the highest sales expectations in, in 27 years. Moutre says costs are also up and in some cases those increases are being passed on to consumers. Yeah, that's going to happen, but people feeling good. Overall, economists are pretty upbeat about the coming months. Now, here's something, though, that I think we need to take in to take in and digest about the economy. Workers are playing a huge portion of this, right? Like everybody, every one of us, even if you own a business, you're a worker of some sort, right? Like I know that everybody thinks people own business are just like Scrooge McDuck you're in the other room and you're just jumping into your 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 gold and stuff. It's not true. It's not. But we've entered into a new world. I think we're all in the new normal. We're, you know, we're, we might be starting to return to work, but I think a lot of folks expect that there might be much more of a hybrid model where maybe some of that work can be done from home. Yeah. Workers don't want to go back to work. It's a great article in Slate. People who'd rather quit than give up remote work. I do not intend to ever again work in an office. Most of it's a younger generation. And let's be real. If you're a trash collector, you're not working from your office. <laughs> Excuse me, Chad. I believe I am a renewable engineer. Whatever. Here's what some people are saying. Asked my boss if we would consider full-time remote with maybe coming in for team meetings once a week. I was told that was impossible. Found a full-time remote gig at $5,000 pay cut. Was gone, in, uh, was gone in about a month after that conversation. I'm much happier working from home and doubt I'll ever return to a full-time office job. So what people are saying. Absolutely understandable, especially for a younger generation. This was always coming. The gig economy was started to explode pre-pandemic. It kind of took off, and it pushed a lot of these things forward. More and more officers are like, we don't need our people here all the time. There's 24 hours in a day. 
If the deadline is Friday by noon, I don't care if you get it done Monday or Friday at 11.59 a.m. That's when the deadline's done. Some things you're going to have to work with people, but here's where the opportunities are coming, is having people that can be the intermediary and making sure everybody who's doing their job is tied in to each other that need each other. And that's one of the things that my uncle and I are struggling with, and him uh, working full-time creative director for for a very large company uh, outside of what we do, said he's got the problem is right now because there is no office. Everybody's scattered. Everybody wants something or has suggestion for something. It's being able to tie everything in together and kind of what you would have on a movie set or somewhere, a producer who's going, all right, you need this. They need that. I need to get with them to get you guys together, make sure that you guys have the things you need. While I do. And that's one of the issues. But workers don't want to come back in. They don't. And people are willing to take less money for several reasons. One, especially a younger generation, and it should be for an older generation. The greatest commodity we have in the world is time. Because it's the only commodity that you lose every day and you can't get it back. Right? There is no up, up, down, down, right, left, right, left, get an extra life. There isn't. This is it. This is it right there. And people want that. They're willing to take less because they think, I'm going to save on gas. I'm going to save on time, which is important to me. For many people who have kids, they're going to save on the fact that they don't have to have child care. And they can be home for their kids in the afternoon. They're flexible. That's something where, hey, you know what? You might have to work till 10, but you got to go see your kids play in the middle of the afternoon. And you got to do things that you wouldn't normally do. And you feel like you're more in control of your own life. I don't blame people for that. People ask me, I love doing what I do. I mean, I love it. I get up extra early, though. I get up a bit like in between 2 and 2.30 every morning. I try to get to work about 3, 3.30, depending on what time I get up. And I, I'm not out of here until 6. And I got a long drive home. And I love what I do. I do. But I love what I did when I did voiceovers. It was awesome. Being able to have flexibility. Do certain things. That at times I don't have with this. But I'm very fortunate because I do have flexibility in the middle of the times, but it's trying to squeeze everything in is tough. And that's why I think more and more people are going to be going this way. And who wouldn't want to? Well, if your boss came to you today, said, look, you get to work out of the house. We ask you to come in one day a week for a team meeting or for something, just kind of a uh, let's see where we're going. You know, how's everybody going on their stuff? That's great. And I think everybody thinks that, you know, even if you're local, that you're not going to get together. I've got salespeople here. They come in and they'll meet with other salespeople that have nothing to do with being in here for a meeting. They're meeting because they're working on something together. And then they go back to their homes. They're here for a couple hours. It's a smart thing. And more and more companies, I think, are going to do this because the opportunity is here. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Crime is rising. I think we know that. It's going up, 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 up. Many in the media play it off. All the Republicans, just a right-wing talking point. No, it's not. It's a real thing. Crime is up. Homicides are up. People are dying. Areas are being held hostage by, by gangs and drug dealers and criminals and For some, again, it's a right-wing talking point, and yet it's really not. What they may require is to be off of our streets because they're making it unsafe for us. And it only took bullets flying in their own backyard for the liberal media to care. This, of course, after CNN hosts previously mocked the surge in violence. You listen to conservative media, you would think that, you know, uh, entire cities are just, you know, brawled in fights and fires and whatever. We went out and had a great dinner in New York City tonight. People actually walked up to us and said, thank you for, I watch you every night. I can't believe they thought they had to do a double take at us actually hanging out and not seeing us on the TV screen. 
Violent crime is up. Crime is, it, it depends where you are. But crime, look, it's still safer than it's been. It's much safer than it was in the, in the, uh, in the like, 80s when you saw just tremendous amounts of, of violence and murders. It is much safer. But murders rose by 25% last year. That's a real statistic. That's not a pretend statistic. That's like, whoa, Midwest, the South, Northeast, the West, nationwide, 24.7% jump. Some try to blame it on COVID. Some try to blame it on the protests. Some say it's a gun problem. Look, it's, it's a lot of things. But it's also not having accountability in some areas. It's releasing a bunch of people on the street, some of which, you know what, they they got convicted for crimes that were ridiculous and petty, and they spent a lot of time behind bars that they shouldn't have. But some, they broke probation, and they said, well, you we should let this guy out. It was a non-violent offense. But there were several other violent offenses behind them. This just happened to be the thing you caught them on. But they're releasing them out there, and there's zero repercussions is another one. Zero repercussions. California criminals are literally getting away with burglary. Brazen shoplifters caught on camera just casually walking out of the TJ Maxx there in Los Angeles. Their arms filled with big duffel bags of stolen items. And our next guest says the lack of consequences is sending a very clear message to the thieves. Criminals are winning. Sergeant Jaretta Sandos. These brazen criminals is fueled by Prop 47. They have absolutely no consequences. Yeah, consequences. Consequences. Consequences are, well, they're good, right? So this is, Prop 47 was essentially uh, a way that when it came up, it was like, all right, so we're going to take some of these things that would be normally felonies, we're going to drop them down to misdemeanors. Shoplifting. 950 bucks grand theft 950 you see where we're going 950 stolen property forgery 950 fraud 950 writing a bad check 950 personal use of mostly legal drugs below a certain threshold of weight all of these things below the certain level what ends up happening well really nothing so it recategorized nonviolent offensive as misdemeanors so people feel like, well, there is no repercussions. And with no repercussions, they could come out and kind of do what they want to do. And that's what's happening. Greg Gutfeld and them came after CNN because CNN and the Jim Acostas of the world and a bunch of other people who think none of this stuff matters and it does matter and that it's only a small spike in certain areas. And look, again, crime's up in certain areas and certain areas, but violent crime is up. But there is no consequences in some of these places. Not everywhere. I mean, you do something in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, you're probably going to get a lot more trouble than if you do it in San Francisco. I think we can all, you know, sit there and go, yeah, probably. But it isn't until it lands on your doorway that people start to take it seriously. And I go back to what happened uh, during the, the riots last year or excuse me, the most peaceful protests, or the not very rioting riots, whichever way you want to go at it, that with all of the protests and stuff, Lori Lightfoot in Chicago kind of turned a blind eye. COVID's going on. You can't wear a mask here, uh, out there, because you're fine. But inside, you know, you got to wear a mask all the time. People were fighting over stupid things like that. She didn't seem to bother until it showed up on her door, Right. The minute they got to her house, it was time to crack down. Same thing goes in St. Louis, right? Remember the mayor there and all the chaos and craziness with the with the two, you know, couple the couple came out with their guns and stuff, but they were going to the mayor's house. And the minute it gets to somebody else's place where they don't think it's going to affect them, that's when they say, Well, this has to end. This gotta end. There needs to be repercussions. There does. But if you're going to defeat this, repercussions are one thing, but you have to look at the deeper root of all of this, which none of us will do, because it's easier to come out and say these people are disenfranchised or it's racism or it's just homelessness and drug abuse and they shouldn't be criminals. Uh, while other people suffer, 
It shouldn't be that way. We can look upon people and say, well, what can we do to help them get in a better position but still hold them accountable? But that takes work. And as we all know, especially in politics, baby, they don't actually like the work. They like to say the phrases, but the work, ugh, no thanks. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us, text the program. Love hearing from all of you. It's the Chad Benson Show. Let the Washington Beltway strangle you. This is where the exhausted majority comes to refuel, realign, and reevaluate. This is Chad Benson. You have wrinkles. M. Night Shyamalan's horror thriller Old debuted in first place at the box office with $16.5 million. But perhaps the bigger story is what happened to last week's number one. I'm a cartoon? The LeBron James animated comedy Space Jam, A New Legacy, was expected to repeat in first. Instead, it fouled out, falling to fourth in week two with $9.5 million, a nearly 70% drop in business from last week's $31 million debut. Oh, LeBron, what happened there? Well, uh, simple. Um... Word of mouth hasn't been very good. People were like, oh, it's like a giant Nike ad with cartoon characters. Yeah, what's up, Doc? So it's been kind of a uh, uh, not a great time for Braun Braun in this situation. Not a great time, but is what it is. Old did well. I want to see it. That's the new movie where you go to this beach, right? You're on this beach. and You're not supposed to be on the beach. Tell everybody, don't go to the beach. People go to the beach, and what happens when you're on the beach? Uh, for every, like, 30 minutes you're there, you, you gain a year of your life. So kids that are going there, and they're, like, six, next thing you know, in, like, an hour or two, they're, they're, you know, they're 10, and then all of a sudden, two hours into it, and they can't get off the beach, and they're pregnant. It's just, it's crazy. It's crazy. So it looks kind of good. They say it's a throwback to kind of horror sci-fi kind of 60s and 70s. So that looks interesting. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson Show is your Twitter. Somebody just uh, tweeted at me, any chance the FDA has a reason to not approve the COVID vaccine? Well, we talked to Dr. Macri last week. This has nothing to do with whether or not it's safe. This is all to do with really one thing. It has to do with shelf life. How long does it last on a shelf? Meaning... How long can you keep it in the refrigerator and still be able to use it? That's pretty much it. This now is all about paperwork and the usual baloney that takes forever and why people get frustrated with government. That's what this is all about. It's nothing to do with whether or not it's safe. Talked to a few doctors about it. This is kind of all the other stuff went a thousand miles an hour till this point. Now it's kind of... But will that change people's mind? I don't think it will. I don't think it will change people's mind. I think if if you've made up your mind and you're not going to take it, this isn't probably, even if they say tomorrow, yeah, we approved it 100%, probably not going to get you to take it. For some people, it may go, okay, okay, yeah, we'll do it. But for others, a a, a majority of, of people who have a distrust and feel like the government's telling what them to do, they're not going to take it. 323-538-2423, 323-538-2423, at Chad Benson Show. Twitter, tweet at us. Did the Japanese Olympic Committee and the IOC lie? They're being accused of that. Not about COVID numbers, not about, you know, the venues or any of these things. Did they lie about the weather? They are going through some nastiness and people are laughing over the fact that they live there and they say, I don't know what they told you, but it's always in the mid eighties to low nineties, even warmer with 60, 70% humidity. Players are dropping. It looks a hot mess. People are miserable. (laughs) You take that with the fact that there's no fans and imagine being a participant in this, not in the glamor sports, But any of these sports, but imagine being a participant in this 
where you know this may be your only shot. And you're one shot away from from your dream. And you've worked your entire life. And every time you go to take that test, you could be ruled out even if you've been vaccinated, maybe even had it in the past. That is frustrating. 323-538-2423. At Chad Benson shows your Twitter. Tweet at us. Text the program. Solid fun Monday. We do it. We did it live. That's how we do it for you kids. You guys have a good one. We'll do it again tomorrow. Night, night, Jack. This is the Chad Benson Show.